2022 Honda Civic hatch, Mazda 3 Sport, and Toyota Corolla hatch. Which is the best small hatchback that you can buy? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the 2022 Honda Civic hatch against the Mazda 3 Sport and the Toyota Corolla hatch to find out which is the best affordable and reliable hatchback that you can buy. And just to make things a little bit more interesting, all three cars that I'm testing in this video are equipped with a manual transmission. But don't worry, I'm also going to be touching on the automatics as well. So let's get right into this comparison, starting with the Honda Civic hatchback, which I'm test driving here in the Sport Touring trim with the manual transmission. Now, one of the first things that I noticed about the Civic hatch that definitely separates it from both the Mazda 3 Sport and the Corolla hatchback is the amount of interior space that you get. This definitely feels like the largest car of this trio with more interior room and a lot more rear seat space. It also has a huge cargo area with back seats that fold completely flat, making it almost as practical as a lot of SUVs. Even though crossover SUVs are definitely the go-to choice for the majority of families, the Civic hatch has so much space that I could really see it being a suitable alternative. In addition to being very practical, the other thing that's impressive about the Civic hatch is just how great it is to drive. It absolutely nails the perfect balance between comfort and handling. The steering and brakes are great, it has excellent body control with very little roll, but at the same time, the suspension isn't too firm. It's smooth and comfortable the way it should be. This is also a surprisingly fun car to drive too, especially if you go for the six-speed manual, like the one I have here. The shifter has a great feel to it, with a positive engagement as you row through the gears, pretty much what you would expect from a Honda. I've also driven the new Civic with the continuously variable CVT automatic, which is a very good transmission too. The Civic also gives you a choice between a 2.0-liter, naturally aspirated 4-cylinder engine, or you could go with a 1.5 turbo on the higher trim levels. My test car's got the 1.5 turbo engine, and it's a very good one, 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque, giving the Civic amazing acceleration and plenty of passing power. That being said, I don't think anybody would complain about the base 2.0-liter naturally aspirated engine either. It makes 158 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque, which is more than enough for a car like this. The 2.0-liter is also the better choice if your priority is long-term reliability. You won't have to worry about any complicated turbocharger issues, which could potentially be a problem with the 1.5 engine. In any case though, the Civic Hatch is an amazing driving car. I've driven cars that cost double its price tag that don't feel anywhere near as good to drive. The Civic Hatch is just a very well-rounded car that seems to do pretty much everything well. It has a great design and a very upscale interior too. Honda did an amazing job with the materials and finishes inside the Civic. The build quality is excellent, everything is put together extremely well, and you also have top-notch technology too. The touchscreen infotainment system is very user-friendly with good-looking graphics and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And on the higher trims, you get a full digital gauge cluster behind the steering wheel, which looks really good too. And of course, it's very well equipped for the money with plenty of great features, including lots of active safety tech as part of Honda Sensing. I'm actually finding it really tough to find something that I don't like about this car. Honda did an amazing job with this redesign, and there's really not much that the Civic hatch doesn't do well. So does the Mazda 3 Sport or the Corolla hatch have a shot of topping the Civic? Well, time to get behind the wheel of one and find out. Alright, behind the wheel of the Mazda 3 Sport. Now the thing that Mazda has become very famous for over the last few years is making cars that are both sporty to drive, but also a little bit premium and upscale feeling to the point where they actually tiptoe on a few luxury cars. And I'm definitely getting that impression driving around in this Mazda 3 Sport. This is a great driving car. It has very crisp handling with great body control, excellent steering and brakes, and it's honestly just as much fun to drive as that Honda Civic hatchback. And I was having a seriously good time behind the wheel of that car. One thing that's also great about the Mazda 3 is that it gives you a choice between front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive, which is a choice that you don't get with the Civic or the Corolla. The car that I'm testing here is a front-wheel drive model with a 6-speed manual transmission and the 2.5-liter naturally aspirated 4-cylinder engine. This engine makes 186 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque, pretty comparable to the 1.5 turbo that you get in the Civic. I'm not sure whether it feels quite as quick off the line, but it's definitely more than enough power. I also like the fact that you get this much power without having the complexity of turbos like you get in the Civic. A naturally aspirated engine is definitely preferable when it comes to long-term reliability. 
The same is also true of the Mazda 3's conventional six-speed automatic transmission, as opposed to the CVTs that you get in the Civic and Corolla. Now there's nothing really wrong with the CVTs that you get in the Honda or Toyota, but for those who are looking for the ultimate peace of mind, there's just no beating a conventional six-speed transmission. And the six-speed manual transmission that my test car comes with is a pretty good one too. It has a smooth, light feel with a positive engagement, maybe not quite as good as the one in the Civic, but definitely very close. Now, if you want serious performance, another nice option that Mazda offers is a 2.5 turbo four-cylinder engine that makes 250 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Now, you can only get this engine with the six-speed automatic and all-wheel drive, but even so, that is a lot of power to have and puts the Mazda 3 on par with a lot of hot hatchbacks. On top of its sporty feel and great performance, the other thing the Mazda 3 does really well is the interior. Like I said before, Mazda knows how to make an upscale feeling interior that rivals a lot of luxury cars, and sitting behind the wheel, I definitely feel that way. The red leather interior of my test car, for example, looks really high-end, something that you rarely see on a car at this price point. And the rest of this interior, with its excellent materials and high build quality, looks really good too. The technology in this interior is definitely pretty impressive too. We've got a full color head-up display combined with a digital gauge cluster and a pretty good looking infotainment system that comes with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Unlike most infotainment systems, including the ones in the Civic and Corolla, the Mazda system is controlled using a rotary dial on the center console and it does not have touchscreen capability. Using the rotary dial and buttons on the center console to control the screen definitely takes time to get used to, but it's definitely not a bad system. Even so, I do wish the infotainment system was a little bit more user friendly, especially when it comes to things like selecting music. And I think keeping that touchscreen capability would have been a much better idea. Aside from having somewhat finicky controls, the only other downside to this interior when compared to the Civic is the interior space. There's no question about it, this interior definitely has a lot less room when compared to the Civic, especially when it comes to the rear seat space and cargo space. Not only is there less room for passengers and for your stuff, but the visibility is not as good either. The side windows and rear window are pretty narrow, so you're going to be relying on that high-res backup camera quite a bit. It's definitely not as easy to maneuver and park when compared to the Civic, which has much better outward visibility. And finally, even though this is a sporty, fun car to drive, it doesn't have the best ride quality. Compared to the Civic, it does feel a little bit firmer and you can feel more bumps on the road. None of these things though for me are major deal breakers because for the most part, the Mazda 3 Sport is a very well designed car. In many ways, it's a very good match for the Civic and there are a few things that it offers that the Civic doesn't like optional all wheel drive and that powerful turbo engine too. Both the Civic and Mazda 3 have set the bar really high for the Corolla. It's going to be a tough one, but it's time to get behind the wheel of one and see how it does. And finally behind the wheel of the 2022 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Now right off the bat I can tell that this is a noticeably smaller car when compared to the other two. And in some ways that's actually a good thing. The Corolla feels very nimble and agile with excellent handling and body control. And it's actually a lot of fun to toss around, more so than I was expecting. I'd say the handling is just about on par with the Mazda 3 and Civic with slightly better ride quality than the Mazda. Even though the Corolla is a lot of fun to drive, one area where it is held back just a bit is the drivetrain. It's powered by a naturally aspirated 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine that makes 169 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. On paper, this engine is not much slower than the other two cars, but it definitely feels it, especially when it comes to low-end torque, which is a little bit better in the Civic and Mazda 3. The manual shifter does help make the most of the engine's power, but it's not quite as satisfying to use as the ones that you get in the Mazda or Honda. Another significant difference between the Corolla and the other two cars here is the interior. The interiors of the Civic and Mazda 3 give you the impression that they're pushing into luxury car territory, and you definitely don't get that feeling inside the Corolla. Most of the controls, however, are well laid out and easy to use, and you also get a pretty straightforward touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It does have pretty dated looking graphics, but I have no complaints about the way it works. Many buyers can live with a more basic looking interior, but what you might not be able to live with is the amount of interior space. The Corolla hatchback has the tightest back seats in this group and the smallest cargo area as well. On the bright side, the Corolla hatchback does have better outward visibility than the Mazda 3, and its small size does make it very easy to maneuver and park around the city. But at the end of the day, it is a less practical car, especially when compared to the Civic. 
based on all of these things, it may sound as though the Corolla hatchback is shaping up to be a pretty solid last place in this trio, but it does have one redeeming quality, which might make it a winner for some. And that is the pricing. The Corolla hatchback is the most affordable car in this group. When compared to the Mazda 3 Sport, the pricing of the Corolla hatchback is anywhere from $500 to $2,500 cheaper. And when compared to the Civic hatchback, you could be saving anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 with the Corolla hatchback, which is a ton of money to save on a car at this price point. So at the end of the day, how do these three hatchbacks stack up? Well, one thing that all three hatchbacks have in common is that they are a great value for the money. They all have a very strong reputation when it comes to long-term reliability, low repair costs, and high resale value. So you really can't go wrong choosing any one of them. If you're looking to save the most amount of money, then the Corolla hatchback is a really good choice. If you don't mind spending a little more, however, to get a nicer driving experience with more power, a nicer interior with more features, and available all-wheel drive, then the Mazda 3 is the way to go. But for me, the clear winner of this group, pricing aside, is the Honda Civic hatchback. It basically gives you everything that's great about the Mazda 3 Sport and fixes the few things that are wrong with it. It has a better ride, a much more spacious interior with more space and a larger cargo area and much better outward visibility. It's just a very well-rounded hatchback that does everything extremely well. And while it does cost more money than the other two cars here, it does a lot of things much better than many cars and SUVs that cost double its price tag. At the end of the day, it really is the best hatchback that you can buy. So let me know what you thought of the 2022 Toyota Corolla hatchback, Mazda 3 Sport, and Honda Civic hatchback. Which of these three would you buy? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more car comparisons just like this, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also take a look at some of my other car videos by checking out these links right over here. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to check out Car Help Canada. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.